that are not looking quite as good as they were yesterday. Uh, the development potential, though, has stayed the same. So let's let's get into it. Here's a tropical update. Uh, this is the system that we're watching. Again, it's now kind of it's it's. It's not quite back over water yet, but it's real close. Uh, as of the 2 p.m. update, this is where the center was located. So pretty much right over uh, the beaches there of Florida, of North Florida there along the, uh, the, the panhandle. Still at a 40% chance for developing. That hasn't changed in 36 hours. They, they upped it to 40% odds of development Monday evening at 7 p.m. We haven't seen that change since, and it's because if we track the history of this, it basically moved over the Florida Panhandle and it has stayed there ever since. So with it being over land, it can't develop. The potential for development will come if the system can move back over the open waters of the Gulf as we go through the next, let's say, 48 hours. That's why the odds for developing are only at 40%. I do think that if this system can redevelop a low level center of circulation over open waters, it's going to be a bit of a different story here. So let's take a look at what this thing looks like right now on visible satellite. Now I'm going to take a step back here and look at this myself. So we've got our, our one little swirl up here. Watch it come out from Florida, kind of drifting up towards Dothan, Alabama. But whether or not that's the, still the, the heart of and soul of this system, you know, kind of remains to be seen because you've got all of this thunderstorm activity here over the Gulf. So this is more in line with where that mid-level so the mid-level circulation is down here. Your lower-level circulation is up here. And the reason why they're separate is because we've had wind shear kind of pulling them apart. This is not going to make its way back over the Gulf. That area of circulation is just going to keep detaching and going to the north. The question is, do we get enough thunderstorm development in this area where you get a new low-level area of circulation? Uh, to develop. So as we kind of zoom in a little bit here, you can see there's nothing really well defined. I mean, there's our swirl up here. You can really see it there. It starts right here and keeps moving up to about that point, right? So that's where that low level spin is going. It's going away from the Gulf, but we still have that mid-level spin that again could spawn a new lower level circulation. That's where that potential, that small potential, is still in play for development here as we get into the next 48 hours. So as of the 1 p.m. advisory, I keep saying 2 p.m., it's 2 p.m. Eastern. As of the 1 p.m. Central advisory, wind's still at 30 miles an hour. It's moving west at about 12 miles per hour. Uh, but again, I just showed you that low level circulation is somewhere up in here now. So it's whether or not we can get something under the hood of all these thunderstorms over the Gulf. That's what really hinges on the potential for development with this system as we go through the next day or two. But if this thing just stays a mess out here, if the shear keeps working on it, you're not really gonna get anything except for a big rainmaker. And I think that's gonna be the main concern for us here the next few days, regardless of what happens. Just a lot of rain here expected along the Gulf Coast. So this is again what it looks like, bit of a wider perspective. This is what I'm talking about here, that mid-level circulation with all of those thunderstorms. And then here's our lower level circulation up in the Florida Panhandle drifting into Southern Alabama. They're separate right now. But what do the computer plots do with this? What do the models show us? They've been pretty consistent really the last few days. We really haven't seen them waver a lot in this opinion of keeping this thing barely over open water, going in towards New Orleans and then curving sharply up towards the north and east. In fact, there's, there's pretty much nothing that takes us into East Texas. Everything goes into Louisiana. It's a straight line on that westward track all the way towards New Orleans and then doing that curve around high pressure that's up here in the, uh, in the southeast. So that's the setup right now. That's how it looks like things are going to pan out at the moment. There are still some solutions that show this going over open water and traveling a little farther to the west. And we've got that for you. It's our high resolution in-house future track model. Now, this is this morning's model run. I think it's way far south of where the actual circulation is at the moment. But what the model could be doing here is latching on to, again, that mid-level circulation, which is right here. So it's doing a decent job with that. But remember, that low-level circulation is still all the way up there. So the model isn't really doing a great job pinpointing on where the, the heart of this uh, system is. But if we get new development farther to the south over the Gulf 
uh, then this is where things will start to become a little more interesting for us the next few days. So we start the clock now. We get you into tomorrow. And notice we get that low level center right in here. So that's not far off from what the model plots, the spaghetti plots, the lines that I just showed you were showing. You know, that kind of trajectory up towards New Orleans. But this model does not hook this system on that hard north turn. No, instead it keeps drifting it towards the west. And so your center, it's kind of diffused here. Again, we're not talking about a hurricane. And in this situation, we really wouldn't even be talking about a tropical storm probably, but look what happens with our forecast here in Southeast Texas. All of this rain starts to get displaced and pulled off to the West. We had talked about this yesterday. If you've got a healthier system and a more compact storm, either a strong tropical storm, um, I wouldn't even say hurricane because we never really expected this to get to that point. But if you get a healthy tropical storm, it, it tends to, pull all of that moisture in closer to it. Think of a think of a um, an ice skater spinning on the ice, right? When they're going slower and they're kind of sloppy, their arms roll over the place. But as they start to get better organized, they spin faster, they pull their arms in together. Think of the arms as the rain bands, right? So as this gets better organized, they pull those rain bands in closer uh, to the center. In this scenario, we've got a weaker system. It's overland more. And so the rain shield expands farther west. So that's why our rain chances are staying on the higher end as we get into the day on Friday. So the timing on this really hasn't changed in either of the impacts. We're still expecting tropical downpours here in Southeast Texas by the time we get to the end of the week. So Thursday, uh, so rather Friday getting into Saturday as well. I will say this water temperatures are plenty warm for this thing to take off if it moves back over that open water. If it could actually get out there and take advantage of these water temperatures, we could see some pretty quick strengthening and organization. We've got a big swath of area here with water temperatures at or maybe just slightly above 90 degrees. And even outside of that, everyone's got water temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. That's not the issue. The issue may be, bless you, David. The issue may be the potential for wind shear. And again, that's what's been kind of working on this system is that northeast wind shear. And so what that's done is it's pulled it's pulled the, um, the mid-level circulation out towards the, the Gulf. I'm going to try to get a good color here that you can see this with. Let's try blue. So this is where your mid-level circulation is, right? But then this is where your, your, your lower-level circulation is. And so the winds have literally been pulling that mid-level circulation away from the lower-level circulation. Um, so as we put this into motion, you can see what happens, at least on this model projection, it kind of skirts along the northern edge of that wind shear, but that wind shear, it's still, the storm is still feeling that effect. So that's why we think there's a cap on exactly how strong this system may get. I think this system is going to maybe, if it gets back over open water, get to tropical storm status. That would be it. We don't expect any type of rapid intensification here, just the way things are looking right now. The bottom line is the same, though. We are expecting increased rain chances for us here in southeast Texas, all the way along the Gulf Coast towards the Panhandle of Florida between now and Friday. And so basically what you need to do at home, nothing's changed here. Stay on top of the forecast daily because things will change based on where this system goes and how it evolves. Um, and it's a good opportunity, you know, first kind of scare of the season to check your evacuation plans, check your hurricane kits. Again, a lot of us tapped into our resources last year with Barrel. So go back into those kits, make sure that everything's replenished and refreshed, make sure that the plans are in place and just stay with us for updates. We're doing these updates like four, four, four or five times a day uh, between streaming and actually uh, on the TV side. So we're, we got you covered here. It's a good dry run, I think, for a, a bigger storm that hopefully we don't get this season, but it, these are always great dry runs for us as we get into the uh, heart of hurricane season and the peak, which doesn't happen until we get to August and September. That's the latest. That's what I got for you right now. Again, no name system, still at 40% odds and struggling to get back over water. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll have an update coming up for you on the KHOU 11 News at 4 o'clock, and we'll see you then.